Greetings Saints, this is Brother Mark here with Out of the Cities Ministry and today I have with me Brother Omar. Brother Omar, how you doing? All right, sir. Praise Thanks for having me. Praise the Lord, Brother. So, uh, today we're, we're going to look into um, uh, country living, the necessity of country living, why we need to do it, and, and how we can actually go about doing it. And uh, Brother Omar. Yes, sir. Um, before we get started, before we get, let's say uh, a word of prayer before we get started. Father in heaven, as we now come together to spend some time talking about things of eternal consequences, Lord, we pray that you would put your words in our mouth and may this be a blessing to others. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, uh, you know, being Seventh day Adventist, um, we have come to understand the uh, the importance of uh, country living, the role yes. that country living it, it will will play in the last days, and the importance of it. So, uh, before we get into that, brother Omar, if you wouldn't mind um, tell the telling the saint out there a little bit about yourself, you know, um, you know, have you always been a Seventh Day Adventist, and you know, and how, how did you, um, uh, what prompted you to kind of get into this message of uh, talking about country living? Well, um, my name is again Omar Murdoch. Um, I'm originally from Jamaica where I grew up and I moved here to the United States in the year 2001. Um, in Jamaica, my mother's side of the family is mostly Seventh-day Adventist, but I did not grow up with that side of the family. I grew up with um, my dad's side of the family, which were very tolerant of all different types of beliefs. Mm, okay, okay. So in my household, my great grandmother, um, when she was alive, she used to attend the Anglican church. Mm. Then my father, he used to attend the Mennonite church. My aunt and her daughters were um, Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh, interesting. So in my household, this is what um, I was exposed to. Right. And these are all very tolerant, very um, understanding people. Right. Um, when I moved to the United States in 2001, I moved to live with my father. Right. And at the time, he used to go to a, a Pentecostal church. Pentecostal. Right. And so I, at the time, I began going there as well. Right. Um, oh, through over the over the years, ever since I was a young person, um, I've always been one to ask questions. I like to get at the meat right. of things, at, at the bottom of it. Yes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so even in um, Bible study in these different church groups that I was a part of, I would often ask questions. Right. I've never really gotten satisfactory answers, mm. and. Um, Along the way, I've made decisions to to stop attending some of these different places. Right, right. Um, when when I when my father passed away in um, February of two thousand two, mm -hmm. approximately eight months since when I before since, since I moved to the United mm -hmm. States, I felt very hurt. I felt like yeah. you know we were separated for. Um, the greater part of 10 years mm -hmm. and I only got eight months with him. Right. I felt like God did me an injustice. Right. And so I took steps to distance myself from God. Wow. And I took off and I, I, I told him that if he wanted me, he would have to come and get me himself. And I took off running. Wow. God began to talk to me in different modes and different ways, right. uh, primarily through dreams. I would get mm. these dreams that I just could not shake. I just could not dismiss them. Right. Um, there were some of them that took sleep away from me, took appetite away from me. They were so impactful. Mm -hmm. And um, it came to the point where I was in distress. Right. I needed to understand what was happening to me. Mm -hmm. And I did not understand. Someone and handed me a book called the National Sunday Law. National Sunday Law, right. right? And I gobbled that book up mm -hmm. in a few days. It was it was like wow. 
But something stood out to me mm -hmm. with Daniel and his dream. When Daniel, when the king in Daniel 2, mm -hmm. when he could not remember his dream, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he went to Daniel. Right. Daniel, they prayed. So I started praying about these dreams as well. Right. And I started praying about them. I was like, Lord, you know, I know we don't have the best relationship in the world. Right, right. But this is really starting to affect me. If, this, if, this, if you're trying to tell me something, I need to know. I need to know. And um, I won't go into the details of any of these right, dreams right. right now. But I remember in school, I used to attend Broad College. And there was a young lady in the class that um, we made friends. Right. She was Seventh-day Adventist. Oh. And I, had, I dropped out of school when my father died. But she kept in touch with me. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember her calling, saying that they had a, 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 a meeting at their church right. that she wanted to invite me to. Mm. And I remember she was pretty persistent in her invitation. Wow. Because the first time she invited, I told her no. Right. But again and again mm -hmm. and again, she just kept, kept at it until I figured, okay, I'll go. Only just to get her off my back. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So I showed up and I sat there in that tent that it was in Davie, Florida, Pemar SDA Church. Mm -hmm. And I sat there and I need that tent. This was the second to the last night of the meeting. And um, the preacher was a gentleman from, from Jamaica. I've never heard of him before, never mm -hmm. seen him. And these dreams I had, I never really told them to anyone. Right. But he sat there and he preached a sermon. That pretty much interpreted my dreams. Wow. And I, I, I left that place that night just absolutely blown away. Wow. I was wow. absolutely blown that away. That was God speaking. To that was God speaking to me. And wow. that night, I made a decision. On my way home from the meeting, I said, you know what? Tomorrow night, I'm going to come back and get baptized. Wow. And so I went home that night and I cleaned out my house. Anything in my house that I thought was sinful, wrong, mm -hmm. not according to God's will, I threw it all in the trash. Every music, every, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. everything in the refrigerator, everything. Wow. I, I just threw all the CDs, DVDs, books, whatever. I threw it all I out. Threw it out. I threw it all out. And um, took out a change of clothes, mm -hmm. knelt at my bedside, confessed my sins, slept like a baby. Mm -hmm. Next evening I went back. I got baptized. Wow. This was in, um, I think it was December 2002. Wow. Wow. So the, the impression was so strong that you didn't even need an altar call. No. That you just see no. it. You I see knew. it was God talking to you. I knew it clear, wow. clear as day. Wow. When he preached a sermon, everything became clear. Wow. So now, of course, over the years, now you become a Seventh-day Adventist. Mm -hmm. Going to the church, like, like you know, all of us. Now, um, how did you come in contact with because because we're just gonna keep it honest saints i mean not every one of our churches where you gonna hear the present truth uh how did you come in contact with the with the present truth the message for this time how did you come in contact okay with it? so the church that i got baptized in my pemar sda um they had invited moses mason mm. shortly after i got baptized and um his messages were very stirring and um, didn't really do much of, on it at the time. Mm -hmm. But many, many elements of the message was in my mind. Yes. And it just kept kind of resounding, mm -hmm. resounding. Mm -hmm. About four years later, I met my wife. Mm -hmm. um, we were just a large group of friends that um, hung out. Right. And um, out of that group of friends, her and I became um, life partners. Right. Um, her sister was very involved in Present Truth Ministries at the time. Okay. She was in um, Dominican Republic at a place called Campo Real. All right. And it's like a, a country retreat okay. Okay. kind of setup okay. that they had going on there. She went to um, Heartland College. She okay. got trained there. And um, that was really like her group okay, okay. that she hung out with. Right. So from her now being exposed to um, to more of it, okay. uh -huh. you know, and she had like the sweetest, kindest spirit ever. She was mm -hmm. so patient, so happy, right. you know, and um, 
that was very, very attractive, very appealing. Right, right. You know, uh, sadly, many times people who purport present truth, their demeanor doesn't really reflect yeah. that they have entered something joyful. That is an issue. That is, you know? that is a big issue. But her and the people that she associated herself with, um, another, another lady was Renee, very yeah. influential in our understanding of um, country message, of the country yeah. message and present truth. And so from there, you know, we, we, her and I, we, my wife and I, we started to explore different elements of it. And we've been through the very, very bright, mm -hmm. jolly situation. And we've also ex experienced the let's get out of here kind of scenario right. as well. Right. <laughs> wow. So, so now, now that you're, you're exposed, you, you know, now you're getting to be exposed a little bit to the um, present truth message. Um, so now at this time you are in Florida. Yes. Uh, how did your transition, what prompted you to transition from Florida to where you are now? Okay. And how did that whole scenario come about? Okay. Well, to, um, to leave Florida, um, this might sound kind of strange, but the leave in Florida was not so much motivated by, by love mm -hmm. for the truth or love for Christ. It was not so motivated by um, what made common sense. Mm -hmm. It was actually motivated by fear. By fear. Oh. By fear. Yeah. Because of yeah. the the um the tornado, the hurricanes mm -hmm. that were coming through South Florida, um, we just we, we we decided, okay, this is not a safe place. Right. And uh, also economically, um, Florida at the time for us just wasn't really working. It wasn't working. All right. It's expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, we just needed a change. Right. We thought let's let's just start over somewhere else right. and so i was invited to a funeral in um georgia right. about three years prior to the time mm -hmm. this was before i even knew my wife and i just mm -hmm. loved the place you know it was a, it was springtime that i came there was flowers everywhere mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there were birds chirping mm -hmm. it was bright and, and beautiful it was warm and it reminded me of jamaica oh you reminded me of home, the rolling hills mm -hmm. of Georgia. And I thought, man, this is a nice place. Right. I wonder if I could live here. Mm -hmm. And up until that point, it never even occurred to me that I could live somewhere else in the United States. Then Florida. And Florida. Right. I thought that's just, that's just mm -hmm. where you live. And so when I went back to Florida and I started checking the internet for jobs and houses, I realized how much cheaper right. housing here was than, and, than, than, than we Florida, where we were right. living. Right. And we decided, you know what? We're, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Well, at the time, it was just myself. Mm -hmm. And um, I tried a year later, and it didn't work. It didn't work. No. But at the time, I wasn't trying to move for country living. Right. It was just trying to find better opportunities economically. Right. A year after the first fail attempt, by that time, my wife and I... We're in a relationship mm -hmm. and we started seriously review because that's what this was my goal we're like i'm leaving florida right and she was fully on board with that and that was a blessing too amen you know amen when your wife is on, on the same page yeah that's yep. key that's yep. very important yeah very important yeah and um you know i encourage i encourage husbands all the time that yes. if you if you have a struggle with your wife getting her on the same page Arguing is not going to convince no. her. No. Opening the Bible and showing her, thus saith the Lord, yeah. may not work either. Opening country living or, or Ellen White books right. and trying to shove it down like that, not, that not may not work, work either. Not work. And this is not to say that your wife doesn't want to believe or doesn't right. want to do it. But you have to understand it takes a great deal of courage yes. to make this step. Oh yeah. This but one thing I do know works every time is prayer. Yes, sir. Amen. Husbands, Amen. Husbands, pray for your yes, wives. Yes. Wives, pray for your husbands. Amen. Don't think that they're just bad people. No. Pray for them. They're struggling. Just like you. You may not be struggling with the same thing that they are, but they're struggling too. Right. Pray for them. Right. And you'll see a great change and response Amen. Amen. in how things work out. Amen. But then um, we moved to Rex, Georgia. Mm -hmm. In um, 2007. All right. So I moved up first and I went back to Florida six months later. We, I got married. Mm -hmm. And then I came back to Georgia. Six months later, my wife joined oh, me. Right. So we did it like, you know, step by step. Step by step. All right. 
And when we were living in Rex, you know, we thought, this is great. Mm -hmm. This is great. And Rex is just, I would say, 15 minutes from the Atlanta airport. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you, you, you're not exactly in the country. We weren't in the country, you know. And, um, but we felt like we're doing better. Right. Right? Well, that's what we felt like. Yeah. We felt like, yeah. But how the area began to become very populated. Mm. Um, we had a few run-ins with um, people breaking into our cars, mm -hmm. shoot out in front of our house, right. police knocking on our doors, mm -hmm. asking for people. Yeah. And we're like, this is not it. This, this is, is not, not it. it. This is not it. So, you know, again, the Lord brought people into our lives mm -hmm. that um, were instrumental. Amen. And... Um, Again, the Lord gave me a dream that initially that basically said, okay, it's time to go. So I was like, Lord, I know it's time to go. Mm -hmm. I believe it with all my mm -hmm. heart. But where? But where do we go? Yeah, that's the key question. It's where do we go? Everybody's always asking, yeah. And, um, you know, sometimes you read things in, in the Bible or in Ellen White. It just doesn't register. It doesn't click. It doesn't right. click. Right. This was, kind of, this was kind of like happening to us as well. We read it. And it just didn't click mm -hmm, at the time. Mm -hmm. So the Lord brought a, 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 another couple into our lives that they were on the hunt mm. ferociously for country living, country properties. Wow. And when we met them, you know, their zeal and their, their, their tenacity you for... Can, you, guys, you guys caught them. You got, you got infected, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. And then a little while after we met, the Lord said to us, Wherever they move, you're going to be in the same vicinity. Oh, that's the same, not too far. Not, not too, too far, far away. Mm. That's right. Not too far away. Mm. And we're like, okay, they didn't even know this. So we right. just started to tag along. Right. When they used to go looking for properties, we would go with we'll them. Go with them. That's Amen. right. Amen. That's right. And that's, a, that's an important point too, because you see, a lot of time we say we want to move, but then we just not doing nothing. That's right. We, have we, to we, do we think something. God is going to... Like you literally just come and drag us. No, no, no. No. You gotta do things to show that you're serious. That's right. That's yes. right. That's yes. right. And along those lines, when they bought their property, mm -hmm. we were not in a position to purchase a home at the time. But to to do what I like to call a down payment on my faith, mm -hmm. we bought some land in the same town that they bought their house. Mm -hmm. And um, when they did that, when I did that, it was, I was saying to God, I was making a statement per se, this is how serious yeah, I are am. Are you really serious? This right. is how serious right. I am. Right. And um, we did that. And then we, while we were still living in the cities, we made a plan. The plan was to pay off our debt mm -hmm. and um, get out of the cities mm -hmm. in five years. Right. In five years. That was the plan. Mm -hmm. That was the plan. Because we thought this is this was what this, the steps were, you know? Right. We were being told you need to be debt free. We were right. told these things. Mm -hmm. None of it is really true right. that we've learned now. You don't okay. have to be debt free to live in the country. No. Although, you know? Otherwise, it, it, like, most so, people will still be in the cities. That's right. That, right. that makes it a message only for the rich. Right. And God said he's a defender of the poor. Exactly. So the message is, is definitely um, for poor people as exactly. well. Right. Um, so... When, when this happened now, we're like, okay, five years we give ourselves. At the time, you know, again, we were living in Atlanta and we um, started working at it. Mm -hmm. At the time, tax cuts had expired. We started making less money now. <laughs> <laughs> at my job, they put me on salary instead of... Oh, um, uh, well, you can't do overtime. Can't, none of those things, you know. So, and then we had also made a commitment to make a change to our tithes and offering of 10 plus 5 mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you know, here we, we're making less. We plan to pay more um, in offering. An offering, right. And it was like, what are we going to do? Mm -hmm. And we decided we're going to stick to our commitment to Amen, God. Brother. Amen. We're going to still do the 10 Amen. plus 5. Mm -hmm. We're going to take the, um, the salary job. We're going to do it. Right. And you know something in that year? We paid off more debt than ever before. We weren't debt free. Wow. We didn't become debt free, but we we accomplished so much that year. At the end of the year, when we we're looking at our finances, we we're like, 
how did this work? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any right. sense. Only God could do that. Right. And then, um, a few months into these events, we I used to scour, even though we purchased the land, mm -hmm. I used to scour Zillow. Okay. Day in and uh -huh. day out looking for Properties. property. These were really cheap. Mm -hmm. But the banks would not give you a loan on a property that was less than, I think, $60,000. Right. But there were houses that were being sold for thirty, forty thousand dollars dollars at the time. How do you get those? How do you get into uh -huh. those properties? Mm -hmm. And I just didn't know how to do it. But you, you read all these articles, you see these advertisements on, online of people mm -hmm. buying houses for pennies on the dollar. You're like, how? Mm -hmm. You know? So I went on an investigation. I found Realty Track, I think it was any other company. Mm -hmm. And they promised to give you these cheap listings for a monthly fee. Mm -hmm. Well, I signed up for that. That turned out to be false. We, we really couldn't find anything useful. Right. And... Um, and so I did another set of research. Well, how does Realty Track get the information? Mm. Well, only thing to find out is the information is, is public information. Wow. You can go to the city hall and you can pull up this information. You can pull up, you can just go to the um, tax assessor's office or the website in your county. Mm -hmm. All the foreclosed houses there. Wow. You hear this thing. So if you go to the, 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 local, the tax assessor's website, and let's say you go there, you type up bank. Every house... That's, that's owned by a, that bank. The, a bank, the uh -huh. Bank of America, uh -huh. Bank of Lafayette, Bank of uh -huh. whatever, Bank of the Ozarks. Uh -huh. Any every house that's owned with the name bank in the owner will show up. Wow. Or if you type in trust, T-R-U-S-T, uh -huh. many of these foreclosed properties are owned in that sense by government trust. Those will come up as well. You see? And you can uh -huh. see who was the last owner, which is the current bank that owns it. Right. So... After learning this, I decided I'm going to give it a test run. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I located a property in uh, Rocky Face, Georgia. And the property was five acres and a three-bedroom, two-bathroom house. There was no price, mm -hmm. listing price for it. So it wasn't listed for sailors yet. So I called the bank that owned it. And I said, hey, I'm, I want to speak to the person that's in charge of foreclosures. Right, right. So they forwarded me. To the, to the individuals, the gentlemen, and I asked them, I said, hey, um, I noticed you have a, a property listed here mm -hmm. um, in foreclosure. Right. I just wanted to find out how much how would much? it be right. for me to purchase it directly from you. Right. He said, well, this particular property, there used to be a mobile home on it, mm -hmm. but when it was foreclosed, the person took the mobile home with them. So it's just land. Just land. And I was like, oh, it's not gonna work, right? Because I need, I don't, need, I don't need just land. Right. I need. I was just right. trying to see how it works. Is this right. true? Is this false? So I said, hey, uh, do you have anything else in the area? Mm -hmm. He said, well, you know, there is another property that we have in that side of town. But it needs a lot of work. It needs some work. Okay. Right? Again, I was just trying to find out. How does, how how does, does this work? work? Right, right. So I said, okay, what is it? He said, it's a two-bedroom, two-bathroom mobile home. Mobile home. Mm -hmm. But it's in really bad shape. It's like, okay, how much land? He said, just under an acre of land. Now, based on what we understood at the time about country living, this property was immediately, like, wow. disqualifying. Mm -hmm. Right? Not even an acre. No, you need minimum five acres, right? Because mm -hmm. that, that's just not going to work. Right, but I still just wanted to find out what 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 kind of deal you right. could you expect. Get, right. So when I asked him for the price, he said, "Well, we're letting that one go for five thousand dollars." I was like, "What? Hmm? Didn't sound right." I right. Thought, right. thought this must be a scam or something. Scam or something, right? Right. So I, I I hung up with him and I called my wife, and I was like, "Honey, what do you think about the situation?" Mm -hmm, here? Mm -hmm. $5,000. She said to me, make him an offer. I was like, this guy not going to take me serious. Right. How are you going to make an offer on a $5,000 house? He goes, well, you can only say no. Right. Right? So I said, what kind of offer should I make? She said, $3,000. I was like, what? 
So I made an offer for 3500 Okay. Long story short, mm -hmm. they accepted it. Wow. Praise the Lord. They accepted the offer. Right? We didn't have the money to do it either. But God provided. God, will provide. God provided he the means does. He to does. do it. And um, so, yeah, we went ahead and we bought the property for $3,500. It took us six months mm -hmm. and about twelve dollars to $15,000 to renovate it and move in. And we did. We fixed it up and wow. we moved in it. It was beautiful because we had no rent mm -hmm. and oh, no mortgage. Wow. So God moved us out here in that situation. We don't rent or no mortgage. No rent or no mortgage. And we lived there for two and a half years until our boys started to come into their own. And mm -hmm. We figured they need more room. More room, right. So we, we by that time, you know, we had two and a half years, no rent, no mortgage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you save some money. So we, had, we were able to put ourselves in a position to where we could buy um, something um, bigger, something, something a little bigger. bigger. Right, right, right. And that's where we live right now. Amen. And then Amen. The, 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 the trailer, what we do with it is we rent it to families that want to leave the Jeez. city. To help to make a transition. Make a transition. Well, amen, Make brother. a transition. Amen. Because not many rental properties is available out in the country. No, nah, in the country, it, 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 it gets a little hard mm -hmm. to find properties for rent. What a, what a tremendous uh, experience that you guys have had. And you know, the Lord always shows up in these situations. Yes. He always shows yes. up. Yes. So, uh, so now we look, we look at your, your, your story behind how you got into the country. So now we're going to uh, talk about the, uh, the spiritual aspect of country living. Okay, so, um, but Omar, so we see, uh, saints, you see how when you're serious about uh, doing God's will, how you will open doors for you. If you are serious about living the cities, living, and go somewhere in the country, God will provide. He will provide. You just Amen. have to show that you're serious. Don't just say you want to do it and, don't, and never do anything about it. But you must do something about it and God will do the rest. Do what you can. Do what's within your power and the Lord will do the rest. Amen. So now, Brother uh, Omar, now, uh, when we speak of country living, um, Number one thing people think is, well, you go to the country to hide. <laughs> uh, talk to us in regards to that, with Omar, with your experience, your children. Uh, is that one of the reasons why we need to come to the country? No. No. Um, in the world that we live in today, right. anyone who thinks they can hide is, yeah. is really fooling themselves. You can't. There's nowhere to hide. No. The technology that exists today makes it impossible for a person to hide right you put you pull up you put your address in something uh, online it will pop up that's right you can't hide that's right right there are satellites in space right. that have all kind of infrared technology right that's not the purpose of it and if that's the, if that's what people are thinking they're wrong they're right, right. Our, our hiding the bible says that he mm. shall hide us yes. in his tabernacle he will cover us Amen. With his wings, Amen. and when that time comes, Amen. And the purpose of country living is to learn dependence on God mm -hmm. for those times. Oh, yes. You see, that's the purpose of it. Yes. Um, it is true that out here in the country, things are generally not as convenient as right. they are in the cities. So, yeah. right? right. So it it gives you uh, um, an attitude of um, taking personal accountability. Right. For your day-to-day -day existence. Right. And plus dependence upon and God. And dependence upon God to see you through. Right. Um, you don't always feel like going outside. You don't always feel like driving mm -hmm. 10 miles to the store. But when you when you, when you you have to do it, right. you, just, you just do it. Right. Um, one of the things that we have discovered moving out here in the country is the quietness. Mm. The quietness. In the cities... There is really no quietness that's natural. Even if you lock yourself in the innermost room of your house, right. the AC is always running. Right. There's always some kind of humming. Sirens are going off. Mm -hmm. There's so much man-made sounds. Right. I remember years ago, I was listening to an NPR report. And they were saying that the sounds that nature generates mm -hmm. 
apparently they keep track of this thing, right? How loud mm -hmm. is the sound that nature generates versus the sounds that man generates mm -hmm. and the ratio between the two. And they're saying that it is now man-made sounds is almost drowning out wow. human made, uh, not nature made sounds natural made sounds wow and i didn't really realize that there was such a thing as just natural sound until i moved to the country when you're out in the in the in the, in the mountains and you just stand still mm -hmm, mm -hmm, stand mm -hmm. perfectly still and you realize you hear no human voice yes sir Hey, no man. car motors, no. no airplanes, nothing. It's just you and silence. Exactly. And what does the Bible say about silence? Be still, Be still. and know that I am God. That I am God. Amen. And I think in the stillness is where we come to understand more clearly what God means for us. Amen. Let Amen. all the earth Be, Be silent. silent before Him. So you really, if I'm getting what you're saying is, you, you want us to understand that there is a connection between uh, your spirituality and country living? Yes, there definitely is. And when you look at the roots of um, city living, mm -hmm. we turn to uh, um, Genesis chapter 2 and 16 and 17, you know, God said, um, the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. Right. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely, surely die. die. And we see God, God put this there. God said, look, Adam, mm -hmm. I have put you in a place surrounded by trees. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. These trees are there for your enjoyment, right. to provide your food, mm -hmm. and you can freely eat of it. So think of it like this. The air that you breathe. Mm -hmm. Do you think about the air that you breathe, where it's going to come from? Mm. No. no. None of us do. No. You know. Right? The heart. Then your next heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Do you consider, oh, I didn't pump it in a few minutes. I need to hurry and pump it again. Right. You don't think you don't about think it. About it. That, it just, right. just, God just keeps these functions available. Exactly. That's how food used to be for man. Food used to be just there. Just there. Just available. Just available. Right. After man sinned, he, he had, had to, to work, work, work for hard it. And, and stuff like that. Right? And this made the earth, cultivating the earth harder mm -hmm. for Adam and, and his descendants. But then you move over to chapter 4 and we see that um, Cain, Cain and Abel mm -hmm. came on the scene. Right. And we know the story how Cain took a... Um, his brother's life right right but then i want to focus on the the conversation between god and cain, and cain all right leading up to this right in verse six god says to cain just after his offering was rejected mm -hmm. chapter four verse six and the lord said unto cain why art thou wroth and why is thy countenance fallen mm -hmm. if thou doest well shalt thou not be accepted Except. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, mm -hmm. and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. So here, God gives sin a personality, he calls him him. Yep. And God is saying to Cain, warning him, you know, this enemy is there, and he's after you, Cain. Mm -hmm. But God is saying, I don't want him. To be able to take control of you. Mm -hmm. Take heed, Cain. Take heed. Right. Right? Cain did not take heed. He went on, murdered his brother. Right, right. And when God asked him about the situation, he says, what? Am I my brother's keeper? Right, right. In verse 10, he says, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. From the ground. And he said, well... What does that mean that the voice of the blood cries? What is the voice mm -hmm. crying for? Right? And we understand from the book of Revelation that beneath the altar, mm -hmm. the 
souls of the saints yes, was yes, crying out to God. What, what were they asking for? How long? How long before you oh, avenge man. us? Yes. So God is saying, Cain, what you have done, this is this requires vengeance. The blood that you have spilled mm -hmm. requires vengeance. Mm -hmm. The avenger needs to get to you. Right? And look at how God deals with Cain right. carefully in these next few sentences. And now art thou cursed from the earth, mm. which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. So God says to Cain, it's because you have done this, mm -hmm. this is what your life is going to be like from now on. He says you are cursed, you are cursed. from the earth. You see, you're cursed from the earth. The earth is not going to be your friend anymore. anymore. When you try to till it, it's going to be hard. Wow. It's not just going to respond to you the way it used to. Your relationship then with nature is going to change. It's changeable. Yeah, it must change. Right. You see that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. His relationship with nature has changed right. because of his transgression. And God is saying this to him. Because of what you have done, mm -hmm. this is what is going to happen from this point on. Right. Cain, in verse 13, says, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Yeah. I was seeing absolutely no remorse. No. Only selfishness. Right. Thinking about himself. Mm -hmm. Forget about my brother who is now dead. What if he had children? What about his wife? He had a wife, so it's some reason to say that Abel may as well have had a wife. What about he, he thought nothing of his right. parents who has lost their son. Mm -hmm. Only of self and self all the way. We see it again. Behold, verse 14, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth. From thy face shall I be hid and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth. And it shall come to pass that everyone findeth me shall slay me. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at what Cain perceived here. Okay? Versus what God actually said. Right. All right? Let's look at it. God said that you are cursed from the earth. Okay? Now, did the curse fall on Cain? Or on the earth? Or on the earth? On the earth. It fell on the earth. Uh -huh. That's right. The curse fell on the earth. But Cain says that, you know, I'm the one that's been affected by this. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond. Right? Did God say that? Yes. Yes. He says, When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield strength to thee. A fugitive and a vagabond, thou shalt be in the earth. Right. Right. Verse, verse 12. Verse 12. And verse 14, so Cain quotes part of that. He said, Okay. This is what God said. It shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. Mm -hmm. Did God say that part? No. No, he did not. No, why? No, he did not. He did not. So why why did Cain perceive that? Where, did, where was this coming from? Mm -hmm. This idea that because I have killed someone, I too should die. Right. Where, did this, where was that coming from? Jesus said, you have heard it said, eye for an eye, tooth right. for a tooth. Mm -hmm. But he said what? It is not so. Not so. He, Jesus said, this does not, this is a principle that did not originate in my kingdom. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. See that? Mm -hmm. This is a man-made principle. This is a Cain-inspired principle. All right? And this goes right back into country living. I'm going to show you. Yes, sir. All right? So God says to him, no, 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 Cain. No, you, you, are, you are not, you're, not, you're misunderstanding my intentions, Cain. Right. He says, to prove it, the Lord said unto him, verse 15, therefore... Um, whoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any find in him should kill him. Right. So Cain is saying, you have set me up for failure. What God is saying, no. I'm God not. is saying, no, I'm not. 
protect you, a mark of protection. Mm -hmm. That people know if they find you, they shouldn't harm you. Right? This right. is to prevent that. Right. I don't want things to get any worse because what you have done has cursed the earth. Right. But remember, that was the vengeance. Mm -hmm. The vengeance that Cain's blood, that, that Abel's blood required, fell on the earth. Right. So he's saying if somebody else kills Cain, then that vengeance is also going to fall on the earth right. seven, seven times greater. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? Right. And God is saying, I don't, I don't want things to get any worse. I want you to live, Cain. I want you to live. Verse 16. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod and east of Eden. Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he builded a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. So you want to you want to go away from God. That's right. And he built a city to be able to do that. Easier. Right. So, so here's a here's a, a, a man that's faced with the prospect that, hey, my relationship with nature mm -hmm. is no longer one of unity. I need to find a way of life then. That doesn't require me mm -hmm. to depend on nature. Wow. And you see how cities are set up. Cities are set up to depend on self, right. depend on human right. inventions. Right. In the cities, many many kids don't even know that foods don't come from supermarkets. Right. They think he, uh, food goes in Walmart and yeah. Yeah, he just shows and, up. Right. I remember um, um, a, a young child coming out here in the country before. And they saw tomatoes growing. They're like, "Oh, this is where this is where tomato. This is how tomatoes wow. come from." Wow. They just, they just people take it for granted. People don't realize that kids don't know this. Right, and that's what city has done. Yes, it is us. a dependence. It's a dependence on human systems. Mm -hmm. In the city, you don't really think about where food food is going to come from. Mm -hmm. You don't really depend on God for the you food. You don't. You depend on God for money. Right. And once you have money, you figure I can get everything I need because right. it's right there for the buying. The convenience. The convenience of it. Right. You say, okay, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll trust God for a paycheck. Right. You know? Wow. wow. But once you're, once you're out in the country, you realize, well, guess what? I'm going to have to trust God for more than oh, just yeah. a paycheck. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You yeah. see? Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to trust God to keep me safe from oh, yes. um, snakes. Yes. From, um, um, what do you call those things? Coyotes. Yeah, all of them. Yes, sir. You know, but in the city, um, you don't have to worry about stuff like that, do you? You, you worry about humans, which to me is far more dangerous, dangerous <laughs> than any wild beast you can come upon out here. But this is, the way, this is where we are today, where we feel like in the city there's more safety, mm. there's more security than there is in the country. We wow. went to do a, a seminar on country living one time. Mm -hmm. and we had a Q&A session. Mm -hmm. And a gentleman asked me the question, so when you're in the country, do you go outside at night? Well, yes, we do. But what, when you go outside, what do you see? Like, oh, man, you can see the stars. It's so beautiful. beautiful. Yes, sir. You know, he said, no, 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 no. You misunderstand me. In the woods, what do you see? Mm -hmm. Do you see eyes looking <laughs> back at you? Like, no. No. And there's nothing you looking back trees. at you. You just see trees and right. darkness. And you just hear crickets going off in yes. the woods. But there's no eyes looking back at you. Right. And this is where people have it. That somehow it's very fearful to live out here. Right. You know, we go away and we leave our houses unlocked. Yeah. And nothing goes missing. Nobody comes in. We um, Sometimes we go to sleep forgetting our doors open. Right. Um, not just unlocked. Just open. I remember while you're saying this, I remember one time we came home and we had a lot of uh, stuff to carry. So I unlocked the door and I left the key in. It happened to us several times? Yeah, I, I left the key in the door and I, we went to sleep. Yeah. And in the morning, I'm looking for my keys. I couldn't find it. <laughs> and it's when I went to the car and I'm coming back in the house. I said, oh, <laughs> that's where my key is. But you do that in the yeah. cities, there could be some trouble. There could be some trouble. Right. There could be some trouble. We've woken up in the cities and my radio is gone from my car right. and you know things missing. And just like that. You can't leave nothing in the yard because um, you won't you won't find it when wow. you come back. So I guess that's why I be why Sister White says stuff like it is ten times harder to build character in the city yeah. because of the convenience, 
Yeah. You don't f really feel the necessity to depend on God. That's right. Because everything that's you right. need, you, you have it. That's right. That's right. And that's the model. That's the model of uh, man-made cities, of earthly cities. The model is we are going to create such a, um, a, a way of life right. that we can deal with ourselves. Exactly. You exactly. know? And we see Babylon employ the same principle. We're not going to trust God to keep his word. Right. Okay. We are going to do this ourselves. He claims he won't flood the earth again. Right. But just in case mm -hmm. he doesn't keep, uh, his, keep word. his word. Right. We are going to be prepared. Right. Right. Well, that is the mentality of cities. Of cities. Let's, let's build a city and make a name for ourselves. Let's right. find a way to support ourselves. Now that you mentioned that, let's go to Genesis 11. Let mm -hmm. me share something with you. Uh, Genesis 11, this is, of course, the uh, Tower of Babel mm -hmm. episode, right? Uh, Genesis 11. And I start with verse 1. It says, the, the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east and they found a plain in, in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they, they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. Now number four, verse four says, And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower. You know something? And it wasn't recently, it wasn't until recently when I'm reading this, I found out. We always talk about the Tower of Babel. Mm -hmm. Yes, we know they did it in defiance of God. That's right. But it wasn't just a tower. There's a city too. That's right. You think about it. So we read this every time and we keep missing this. That's right. It says they built a city and a tower. That's right. So it wasn't just a tower that they built. They also built a city. city. Mm -hmm. And verse 5 says, And the Lord came down and see the city and, and the, the tower, tower. which the children of men build it when you go down to verse 8 we know what happened the lord uh, we know what what the lord came down and and, and did but verse just eight. before just before you get there mm -hmm. you know it's, verse 6 tells us that the lord said behold the people have one language mm -hmm. and this they do and now nothing would be restrained from them which they have imagined to do because what god realizes is this city mm -hmm. is designed to fulfill human desires this is so you see, whatever they imagine right, to do, right, they will do will it. not be withheld from them because mm -hmm. everything that they have built here is designed to facilitate wow. human pleasure. Everything of it is designed to facilitate human pleasure. Wow. Nothing of it was designed to glorify God. To glorify God. Nothing. In fact, they wanted to make a name for themselves. For themselves. They wanted to forget about God. That's right. In verse 8 says, So the Lord scattered them abroad. From thence, and they left off to build the city. So God scattered them abroad, and then they gave up on That's finishing right. building the city. That's so, right. saints, it wasn't just a tower that they built in defiance to God. They built a city. That's right. So now, you can see the importance of leaving these cities and going to a country where you can actually, where it is easier uh, that you can hear vo the voice of God. Now, mm -hmm. sometimes people say, well, does that mean then everybody in the cities are lost? Or, yeah. You know, in the country, if you're in the country automatically, are you saved? No, because when I was living in the city of Atlanta, that's where God spoke to me. Right. When God spoke with Abraham the first time, he was living in the city. Right. Daniel was pretty much educated and raised in the yeah. city. So this is not the situation at all. But however, we have to recognize that the gospel is extremely practical. Yes, sir. Very, very practical. And the, and the counsel that is given through scripture, it's one that for now we may not see how common sense is, is going to really make. But if we just trust God and, real, and just say, you know what? Some way, somehow, one day this is all going to make sense to yeah. me. We don't need all the answers right now. We uh -huh. really don't. We just need to understand one thing and believe it. God means us all the good in the world. Amen. Do we really believe that? Amen. Amen. This is, this Do we really believe that? That's what it boils down to. Wow. Do we really believe 
that God will never set us up no, for failure. For failure. Or do we really are we, are, are we among those that think that God hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he can right. be lost? Now let me ask you this, and this is a question that you know, a lot of people ask us. What do you think? Because a lot of people hear this these messages and they see the truth in it, but still they won't make that step, that first step. What do you think is keeping people from making that step? What do you think is keeping people really to just stay in the cities and not making their move, even though they see? So let me ask you a question. Truth. Would you consider yourself that every single element of truth that you obey perfectly? Yes or no? No. Right. Same here. Right. What is keeping you from doing it? It's the same thing that's keeping them from doing it. Mm. It's the same thing. Right. You know, it's people who are who haven't made the step is not to be looked down on. No. It's not to be um not at all. To be looked at as somehow spiritually inferior. Right. No, it's not. It's a process. It is a process. And I believe that most of these people um, have bad advice. Yeah. I, I think a lot of that. And the task looks undaunting. Right. Because when you think, okay, if I need to move to the country, I'm going to need five acres of land. At least, yeah, I need at least I'm going to need to be right. off the grid. Mm -hmm. I'm going to need a well. Mm -hmm. I'm going to need this. I'm going to need that. And you look, at your, you look around you, you're like, well, this does not seem feasible. Right. And at the meantime, you're still in the cities, losing your children in the cities because of bad advice. Because of bad you advice. can't get out. Right. Because people are telling you, don't get out un until or unless. Right. But the fact of the matter is, you don't need a lot of land in the, in the country. You don't need five acres. If you do, great. But here's, a, here's, here's, a, here's one thing I realized just recently. Mm -hmm. I said, man, there are many Adventist families that live out in the country that have dozens of acres of oh, land. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, you may not be, they may not sell you an acre of land, but if you say to them, hey, I live in an apartment in town, can I use an acre of your land to do a garden? A garden. 99% of the people that I know will have no problem with that. Right. They'll have no problem with that. Right. They'll say, go ahead. Because the land is just sitting there doing nothing. nothing. So that's a blessing. Right. And when we learn to work together like that, that's another thing. Don't think that moving out into the country has to be a one yeah. family or a one person. Right. You just do affair. your stuff with you and your family. You just no. move away from everyone. No. 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 We're counseled that when we move, a two or three families move together. Right. You see? Form that relationship. Right. Form that band. It's like how the Lord told us that, hey, we need to move with this family right. here. Right, right, right. And their help was so vital mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in helping us to get established in the country. Exactly. Without them, it would have either been almost impossible or severely more difficult. Right, right. You know? Right. But because we had them close by and they were ready to help, or we were ready to help, right. we were able to help each other with our, getting our gardens going. We were able to help each other through those really tough, cold nights. Right. We've never lived in a trailer before. So when that cold came down, we're like, hey, we're coming over to sleep on your couch. Right. And they're like, come on over. Mm -hmm. You know? Right. So it was all like, it's just right. And we have to un we have to get rid of this I got it mentality and learn to work together, to cooperate as brethren. Right. Because unless there's cooperation, there is no success. Amen. We there's gotta no learn to work together. Yes. Hey, if we're gonna be like sometimes we, we have the mindset, well, when the time of trouble comes, you know, we all gonna live together somewhere mm. in the mountains. But if you've never had, if, if you've never done it, so you think That's automatically, right. like when the crisis comes, you're gonna be able to do it's it. Not, it's it's the happen. same thing too. People say, well, some of us have never been, have never, never been in the country, right? But we think when the crisis comes, we're gonna just run in the mountains. No, you're not. You're not gonna run That's in right. the mountains. That's right. Because you're gonna you're gonna fear some lions gonna overtake you mm -hmm. something and you're gonna overtake you just like mm -hmm. Lot says. If I go to the to the mountain, some evil might overtake. That's right. That's right. So we cannot deceive ourselves into thinking when things are good right now, where well, we need to be training ourselves. We're not doing it, but at the time of crisis that we will do it. That's right. That's, That's a right. form of deception. So, brother Omar, if you, what advice would you have for somebody that's watching this and that feel the necessity to make a move. 
if you would have some advice for somebody like this, what would it be, Brother Omar? Because, you know, there's a lot of people, like you said, they listen to the wrong, they got the wrong advice. Mm -hmm. And some people don't understand. Moving to the country is not just moving from one city to another city. Moving to the country is, it has a spiritual aspect to it. That's right. You got to depend Serious. on God. It's That's not right. just you go from one city to That's another right. city. No, 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 no. This thing, you must depend on That's God. Right. So what, what kind of advice would you have for somebody who's who's looking to make that move, Brother Omar? I would say this, you know, by God's grace alone, is this going to be possible? Right. Which I'm sure, you know, we, we all agree on. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to make it very practical. Right. Right. We're going to make it very practical. I have children. Right. When my children ask me for something, I typically say, why should I do it for you? Right. Tell me why, you know? Um, and I require something in return, whether it's behavior mm -hmm. or a chore mm -hmm. or, or something. It's not always the case, but right. you know, if it's something significant, you know, you don't just give handouts. Right. Right? And this is not to say that you can work to get yourself in the right. country. But there are practical things that we need to start doing from now. One, we need to come to a mindset. That's the, that's the most important thing. The mindset is this. One, I may have to drive an hour to get to work each yeah. way. Yeah. Okay? That's, yes, that's just reality. Yes, that's the reality of country That's the reality of country living. Right. I just may have to drive an hour to get to work each right. day. Right? So, prepare for that. Right. Start preparing for that. Right. How do I prepare for that? One, just get it in your mind as normal. Okay? Right. This is what normal is. And many people will realize that living in the city, they actually drive an hour to get to work as right. well. Not as many miles. Not as many miles, but, but you're just stuck as in much traffic time. In, in, in That's right. That. right. That's right. Then, once you get the mindset down, you start thinking of, okay, how can we do this efficiently? Mm -hmm. Where we're not wasting. Have a vehicle that is fuel yeah. efficient. Yeah. You know, find a vehicle that's fuel efficient, a vehicle that is, you know, a little bit rugged because sometimes the roads in the countries mm -hmm. can be a bit hard, like my right. driveway, you know, <laughs> you have experience. Um, find a vehicle, you know, you don't necessarily need an all-wheel drive or a four-wheel drive, but if you can't afford it, go for it, you know, but at least something a little bit off the ground here right. and there. Um, start to be very, very practical. Start to understand that um, you don't need name brand clothing okay you don't need 10 50 suits 100 dresses mm -hmm. start cutting back yes sir and start learning to live a simple simple life, life. As simple as possible simple. as simple as possible a simple life when we were paying off debt that's when we realized and by the way we're not debt free we're not right. we're debt yeah, free that's important yeah right? you want to make sure we're not debt free. you don't so you don't, know, don't if think you're waiting for you to be debt free that's to right. be in the country well you don't know how long that's going to take right. in the meantime your children are getting influenced that's in right. the city. So you don't want to do that. But being said, and we're not debt free, we'd rather have a mortgage in the country than in the city. Right. You see? Right. So if I'm going to have a mortgage, yeah, might as well yeah. I have one in the country. In the country, right. right. So we think of things very practical. Right. Because, you know, the Spirit of Prophecy tells us that practical godliness mm. is what we need today. Mm. We need practical godliness. Yes, Too yes, much sir. theory. Right. We is, say is, we don't do. Yeah. We, right. need, we need practice. And so we look at it like, yeah, um, where you are right now, if you can't find the means to, to purchase a property or anything, what can you do to put a down payment on the faith mm -hmm. that God has, has um, put in you? Right. The faith that is in you, as small as it may be, there's an action that can accompany Amen. it. Amen. Amen. And as small as an action may be, make it. Right. How about going to the hardware store and buy yourself a peach plant, right. put it in a bucket, and begin to care for it. Yeah, exactly. Right? Because guess what? It's going to take about two years for the plant to yeah. start to produce fruit. But if you have a head start, right. when you come to the country and you plant yours, exactly. by the next year, you have fruit. Well, we plant ours, but ours, there's no fruit. Right. <laughs> we have to wait. You know, so if I knew this when I was living in the city, that, hey, you know, start your fruit plants from right, now. Right. You can just move with them. Right. But start them from now. So that when you move to the city, to the country, that's a, that's a down payment. That's, that's faith. That's saying, this, your faith is what I'm expecting based on God's promises. Amen. 
So God has made a promise. Well, are my expectations, my hope, are, are those in alignment with the promise? Right. And if they are in alignment with the promise, press forward. Amen. And the promise that Ellen White gives us is this. Nothing can be specified until a move is made. Mm. So you're not going to know everything you need to do right. until you do something. Right. Got to do something. You got to do something. You're going to build a house, right? You walk up on the land and it's wooded. Right. You don't know where the foundation is going to be until you cut down all the trees right. and clear the land of roots and things like that. Right? Mm -hmm. Even then, you still need to call in the professionals to say, okay, this is where the font, this is the best layout right. for this house based on how the water will flow and all of these things. This is, this is where your foundation needs to be. Right. Right? But none of it is going to be possible until you do until you something. So saying you hear it, that right? you got to do something. You have to do something. You, it doesn't have to be something big. Big. And this is where people tend to think, if I don't do it big, right. it's as if I did nothing at all. Right. Think of the widow's might. Yes. That small seed, the small penny mm -hmm. that she put in that offering plate was more. Yeah. Yeah, it was more. Than because what the other one gave. it was weighed down with faith. Amen. And that's what is of value to God. Amen. It, it, it's a, it's, that's what's of value it to God. It comes down to faith. It comes down so, to faith. So, a move from the city to the country has to do with faith. Yes. And it's not. And faith, again, is not an abstract right. idea. Right. Faith is not simply belief. Faith is action exactly. that is guided by belief. By belief. Exactly. Exactly. See, yes. that action, there's a belief on what God has said, why I'm doing this action. Amen. I'm not going to do this action without a thus saith the Lord. Amen. The reason why I'm doing this action is because God said. Amen. And if you have a God said, oh, oh man, that's, a sweet, that's the easiest way Amen. to express faith. Because God has said. It's the only way to express faith. Only way. Because if I express it otherwise, it becomes presumption. Right. So we, and we know what God has said. God's desire for us is that every family should have a small piece of property yeah. with a comfortable home yeah. out in the country. Yes, thanks. Yes, yes. And, and you know, there's many aspects, other aspects that we can speak about, you know, as to why we need to be in a country. If you have children, you see how your children, you didn't teach them something, but they doing it. Where do they get it from? Mm -hmm. Influence in the cities. Mm -hmm. So all these things, since when we look at them, it is time that you and I, we make a move. We, we, we have to do something. The key is, like Brother Omar said, is by faith. You cannot just sit and not do anything and just think that, you know, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So saints, like we always try to encourage you. It is not God's will that his people be in the cities. It's not his will. Uh, we saw in the Bible, Cain was the first one to build a city as far away from God as possible. So city living really makes it easier for you and I to get mm -hmm. away from God. Now, I want to mention, uh, we are not saved by country living. Okay, I want to make sure this is clear. We Amen. are not saved by country living. What yeah. country living does is this. It puts you in a situation or in a place where it is easier for God to communicate his will to you. Amen. So then it's easier for you to understand God's will. Amen. When you place yourself in the country, in the quietness, among the hills, the mountains, you know, you can hear God's voice easier. So there's no salvation by works here. That's there's right. no That's right. uh, salvation by country living. But That's at right. the same time, Noah, God told him there's going to be some rain and you need to build a boat. If Noah did not build a boat, he would have been destroyed. So uh, uh, he didn't. He, he could have said, "Well, I believe," mm -hmm. but then I believe God, you're going to protect. You're going to protect me and not build a, a, a boat. He would have been destroyed. That's, pre that's presumption. So we need to do some things that show what we believe. Like what we what we say we believe, there must be works associated with that to show that we really believe what we say we believe.
Another thing I would also encourage, and this is the last thing I'm going to add, okay. right, is um, how many of us have really looked into this subject ourselves? Right. You know, uh, ministries like what you do is wonderful, great ministry, uh, very encouraging and right. useful information that is put out there. But how many of us have sat down with our mm -hmm. Bible, For with our spirit of prophecy, mm -hmm. and look at what is said about country living? Yeah. Or are we really just dependent on sound bites from yeah. YouTube clips and yeah. YouTube videos and yeah. sermons on yeah. audioverse and mm -hmm. these places? Look at the issue yourself. For yourself. For you see? Yourself. Yes. And guess what you're going to be able to do? You're going to be able to add to the conversation. Right. Amen. You're going to be able to help somebody else. Amen. And it's going to make a lot of difference in how you see this issue. Amen. A lot of difference. That's very important. Study for yourself, saints. Whatever we say here, don't just take it and run with it. Yes, sir. Go study it. Be like the Bereans. Go and see what we're saying if they are so. Go study these things for yourself, saints. And, you know, as Adventists, we used to be called the people of the book. Mm -hmm. But now, it's no longer. Now, we, like, like Brother Omar mentioned, we, 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 we're waiting for somebody to bring these things to us. So, all we can do is is, is trying to spark the fire. That's right. Trying to arouse you a little bit. But it's up to you to go and study these things for yourself and see exactly what the Lord will want you to do. Saints, again, I want to thank you for watching Brother Omar. I want to thank you for your time. Thanks for having me, buddy. Uh, uh, praise God. Praise God. And, and you know, if this was a blessing to you, saints, feel free to share this with your, with your friends and your family. Be prayerful. Do not make any rash decision. Be prayerful about everything that you do. But keep in mind, it is not God's will that you and I will be in the cities. We should work the cities, but not by dwelling in the cities. We should have our country home and go to the cities and do the work. And after, and, 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 and after that, you go back home like Enoch used to do. So, saints, it was a pleasure for me and Brother Omar to be with you. Until next time, it was uh, Brother Mark with Out of the Cities Ministry. Brother Omar, until next time, bye-bye.